Hello, my name is Peter Phelps, uh, Phelps 3D, and this is another video on the Cobblebot Little Monster Assembly series. This time we're working with the Arduino IDE, the Marlin, and the U8 Glib. Now, the reason I'm not using a repeat here is I was having problems trying to get the full graphics LCD and the repeat here to compile so I could upload it. So, so I defaulted back to Marlin. So the Arduino, you want to install the Arduino IDE program for the Arduino website first. Download your Marlin and I'm using the release candidate version and download your U8Glib files. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take, I've extracted the files to my desktop. I'm going to take the U8Glib folder. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to open up my C drive, go to my program x86 file, through, open up the Arduino folder, open up the libraries folder. And I'm going to go control V to paste it in there. And I'll say continue. This copies the graphics library for the full graphics controller into the Arduino library. And we close that one. Then I'm going to open up Arduino IDE. In this case, I am using 1.7.0 version. It will open up a blank document. So C 1.7.0. I'm going to go file open. Go to my desktop. Open up the Marlin. Open up the Marlin. Again. And you might not see the extensions, but I have it so mine shows my extensions. We want the Marlin.ino. It should be the only file in here that has the actual Arduino um, icon. Say open. And close the blank doc. Open this up. In this version of Marlin, they've separated out all the um, boards that it supports. So you want to. You want to open the little arrow there and come down to find boards H. Open that one up. And 43 is the one you would use if you had an extruder fan or bed. I'm going to use 45 because right now I do not have a heated bed, so I'm going to use that. But it really isn't too hard to reflash it with one or the other. You could use 43 and then just define the bed as being zero out and it, it would work. So I'm going to use 45. Then we want to click on the configuration H file. And you scroll down. You want to change the baud rate here. To the eleven five two zero zero, like it says right here. This is the baud rate that the mega board can communicate at. Then here is this motherboard. You can change this. And like I said, I'm going to just change it to forty five. Define the motherboard as uh, saying forty five. If you have a heated bed, use forty three. One extruder, unless you have two. Power supply, I'm using an ATX 600 watt power supply. If you're using Xbox One, then use the two. Um, for the thermistors, I went in, on to reprap.org and looked up their hexagon hot end page to define what this is. And it says the type should be five. Marlin. So I'm going to use that number. So down here, five. 
Now, if you have a heated bed, you'll probably have a different sensor number to input here. You'll put that number in here where it says bed sensor. Um, it also said to change the residency time to 5 and the hysteresis time to 5. Um, I'm going to change the bed min temp to 0 because I don't have a heated bed just in case. And these numbers here you might want to change if you're doing some higher higher types of filament like nylon etc. But 275 should be high enough for most of it. And then the other thing they said to leave is this Ultimaker the PID numbers, the default KP and all this, to just leave that the way it was. They have an alternate setting in there, but I'll only play with that if I find I have a really hard time keeping the temperatures accurate on my hot end. Um, okay. We're going to leave most of the rest of that same. Um, in the end stops, I Video 22, I state switching the green and the black wire. Don't do that. Just switch around the, um, on the ramps end of it. Switch around the positions where the red wire is toward the edge of the board and the green wire is toward the steppers. And that will solve the issue when I wired it up the other way. Now another issue is that we're doing a pull down switch rather than a pull up. So you want to comment out the define and stop pull ups. Because otherwise the thing will just continually say that it's it's been hit, that it's been switched. We're going to leave this because the, the switches are normally closed type. We're going to leave these three is false. Normally closed means that um, power is constantly going through the switch until it is hit so that it can detect if like a wire is broke or, or comes loose then it will stop the printer from moving instead of it uh, crashing. And so we continue to scroll down. Here we want to we want to use the numbers here for the max positions, the 254 on all those. So we want to put those into this one. Okay. Uh, um, we're not using that auto bed leveling for right now. Although I have no idea how to do the leveling on this printer at the moment. There doesn't seem to be a manual bed leveling setup. Okay, and the next one we want to do is get down to here. Default access steps per unit. We want to use these numbers here 80, 80, 400, 94.5. Okay, and what this means is 80 and 80, these are the GT2 belts with a 20 tooth pulley. So 80 steps per millimeter is their default on that. The 400 is your Z axis, the threaded rod, and that's 400 steps per millimeter movement on that one. And then the 94.5 is your extruder and how many steps it should take for it to push one millimeter of filament through the extruder. This is the, these are the numbers you will be changing when you do your calibration. I typically use some um, blue painter's tape and I will move the axis like 40 millimeters using the LCD screen and then I will measure and then 
what I do is it's the formula I use is the the amount measured divided by the amount I expected it to move times the old number of steps per axis number of steps and then that equals your new number of steps um, and then I'll, I'll do that two or three times and then I'll switch to using calibration cubes like the 2020 calibration cubes you can get on Thingiverse and I'll uh, reiterate that another three to four times before I get it and I make sure I write down all the numbers when I'm doing the calibration so that I can tell if it's shifting too much usually it's sort of a, a steady progression towards towards the numbers but if it all of a sudden just does not stay within a pattern or a, a progression I'll, I'll then you can kind of tell that it, it, there might be a problem with the stepper drivers or there might be something physically wrong with your setup that needs to be worked on before you can get the calibration dialed in. Okay, and then we want to go down. I tend to turn this to 220 for my PLA preheat. Um, and then we want to add the SD card support by uncommenting that line for SD support and then this one here almost threw me because it says it's a full graphics controller this is not the one we're working with that's so we're using this one down here RepRap discount full graphics controller white PC so we want to uncomment this one down here and that should be the last change we need to make. A lot of this other stuff is, is servo supports. Uh, you don't need to set this here. I believe it's all about this film and sensor. <clears throat> Most of the time, you're going to set your filament uh, setting in your slicer program, not in here. I mean, it, it might not hurt to sit, change this to 1.75. Won't really hurt it. Okay. Um, maybe this one. 1.5. Then we're going to go file, save. And then we'll file, upload. And it'll take a while to file the sketch. So I'm going to pause for right now. All right, now it's finished compiling and should be uploading to the um, Arduino board. So this is your status, how many bytes, how many uh, complete in total. So it leaves 322. Now it says done uploading. Yay! And now on the board, uh, you should see on your LCD screen, uh, the extruder online says it's at 18 degrees. The X, Y, and Zs just say nothing. The fans, nothing. The FR, I don't know what that is yet. 100%. Um, the SD card little thing that says, oh, I must have messed up. I forgot to change it from 3D printer to, I goofed that up. Uh, I like to name my 3D printer and I guess I skipped that one. Going too fast trying to get this done. If you want to change the name, uncomment that, and I'm going to call mine uh, 
blah, blah, blah. Oh, um, I should have done that as the first step after I got past these with the motherboard. And I'll, I'll upload that again. But this lets me know, because I have other 3D printers, which one's which. It helps. And I'll upload that again on my own. I won't make you watch it. Thank you. Um, that's basically the setup. Goodbye.